What's good, bro? It's Louis Gusto. Together we've gone to Manhattan's Chinatown to eat some of the best food in the country. But today we're in the borough of Queens in Flushing's Chinatown. We'll be starting off at Apollo Bakery. Then we'll be headed to New World Mall's Underground Food Court, wrapping it up with a little bit of dessert. Go ahead and finesse that like button so we can start eating. So we first stopped at Apollo Bakery on 39th Avenue in Flushing, Queens, so we could begin our day with some Chinese pastries and baked goods all contained in this thank you bag. First up, we got something a little savory. It looks like a pull apart bread. This is dry pork and scallion, some sesame seed on there. It's very shiny. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull one piece off. Almost kind of reminds me of a dinner roll or something. But I wanted something savory since I had oatmeal and coffee to start my day back at the crib. Now we're gonna get a little savory bite with some pork. Mm. So you got some sesame seeds there, some thinly sliced dried pork, scallion. And then on the inside, there's some dried pork. It's almost like a pork floss. It's really good. It's a nice fluffy bun with a good chew to it. And the savory flavors come through. I like the sesame seeds on top. I feel like it's a final touch that's necessary for something like this. Check it out. This is a sponge cake, as you could see. It's cut almost into like a pizza slice. I guess I've been eating so much pizza now, that's all I can think about. But it's very light and bouncy. A lot of air in there. They told us it was lemon flavor. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to squeeze it down and get a big boy bite. Let's go. Mmm. Mm. You can see there's an ever so thin layer of some kind of frosting. I guess that's the lemon flavor two big chunks of the sponge cake surrounding it. Makes it like a little sandwich almost. It's really good. Just a hint of sweetness. Like I said, very light and airy, so it's not gonna bog you down. This is something that would go perfectly with a cup of coffee, but I just had coffee before I left, so it's not time yet. Overall, I could say, it's a nice spongy sponge cake. Pastry adventure at Apollo Bakery. We got a little taro cake. That is beautiful. This reminds me of back in the day when I used to make the little solar system models for my school science project. It's like the eighth planet right here, Pterodopoli or something. Mm. Mm -hmm. Taro cake is flaky on the outside, like a puff pastry type. And then inside there's a taro pasty type of filling. But overall, the pastry is very dry, which is not a bad thing. It's just trying to be real with you guys. It has a good, light, delicate taro flavor, which uh, if you don't know about taro, you need to go to taro.edu and get educated. We got us a red bean mooncake with some black sesame seed. It also has an egg wash on there. We've had lots of mooncakes, but this is pretty unique flavor. It's almost like a dumpling or muffin type of shape. Mm. So this mooncake is dry and flaky on the outside, but moist on the inside. And it's actually got two different fillings, which I wasn't anticipating. It's got that red bean paste. And then inside it's got a tangy kind of butterscotchy. I don't know if that's an egg yolk that's sweetened or salted, but overall it makes for a good flavor. And it's kind of like a mystery surprise, right? Like how many bites does it take to get to the center of a mooncake? Just one, but then you got to figure out what the fillings are. We are at the New World Mall Underground Food Court, and I'm getting my chopsticks ready. All right. It's time for lunch in Flushing Chinatown, so we came to the New World Mall. They have an underground food court with countless stalls preparing hot and fresh food for you to devour. We stopped at three food stalls today. First, Pan Bao 66. We got a six pack of their pan fried bao. There's a pork filling and some black sesame seeds on there. So we got a nice sampling of the New World Mall food court 
some good Chinese food right here in Flushing's Chinatown. I'm gonna start with the pan fried bao. Dip it in a little sauce here. There's some scallion on top. As I took a bite, that soup just shot out the back end like the exhaust on an old pickup truck. I was not ready for that. I actually didn't know they had soup. I asked what the filling was and she said pork. I didn't know there was also a little bit of soup in there. That said, it is insanely delicious, hot and fresh. On the bottom, you got a nice little pan crispiness. Now I know better. These are very squishy. When he was putting them in the pot, they almost look like mochi. They get a nice coating on the bottom from the pan, it's brown. Then on top, they add some sesame seeds and some scallions. Maybe a little bit of too much oil for my particular liking, but hey, if you're only eating it once in a while, what harm could it do, right? Bing. So I'm gonna dip this in the soy sauce and chili oil sauce that Narissa put together. Make sure to dip it. And now I'll bite a little corner so the soup doesn't shoot out. Mmm, there we go. Nice little pork meatball inside. Excellently flavored broth. They were just cooking them the whole time. Once you place your order, you don't really have to wait very long to get them. Whenever we got that soup shooting out in slow-mo replay, it's an excellent little pork pan-fried bao. I like it. At Lan Zhao Hand Make Noodles, you can watch the dude making the noodles, pulling them apart, cutting them up, boiling them, and putting them in either a stir fry or a soup. We decided to go with the soup. You could get egg for an extra dollar, but we passed on the egg today. They have shrimp and beef and tripe and all kinds of ingredients, so it's kind of like a build your own bowl. Mm. It's a very light broth, a little salty. We got some bok choy in here, and then of course it's all about the noodles, so I'm gonna try those now. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Wow. Mmm. Yo, those noodles are on point. There's a nice little wonton. Got a little bok choy as well. Gotta get those greens. Mmm. All right, even if I hadn't seen the dude making these noodles fresh, I could tell they were hand pulled because they're different sizes, they're uneven. They also taste very fresh. It's not chewy, chewy, chewy to where like you're like a chewing on a piece of gum, but it has a nice amount of chew to it and it doesn't break down in the hot broth. The wontons, honestly, they're not my favorite. They're just okay. With the bok choy in there and the scallion, nice delicate broth, put it all together. It's overall a very good bowl of soup and worth the trip just for these hand pulled noodles. We also got some dry vegetable hot pot from Lao Ma Malatang. Malatang, Malatang. One of the cool things about underground Chinese food courts from what we've seen is you could get this build your own dry hot pot. We got the vegetable, just cause we've been eating so much meat lately. We got some lotus, some bok choy, some wood ear mushrooms, some bean sprouts, and what else did you order? Oh, you pick your vegetables, they blow them up and they take them in the back, do a little fry up, put it in this nice big wooden bowl, top it off with a little bit of cilantro. We got the spicy. You get four levels of spice, so we got level three on the four pepper scale. This is definitely a convenient way of eating hot pot because typically it takes a long time. Goes a woody mushroom. Some bok choy and bean sprouts. Nice piece of lotus. Very crunchy. So this underground food court is loud, it's mad, very crowded and busy. A lot of stuff to choose from, but definitely worth it. You could choose as many samplings as your heart desires. Today we went with three restaurants, but there's so much more to try. Uh, 
After lunch, you know it's tea time and there are a lot of options in the New World Mall underground food court. There's Kung Fu tea, there's Tiger Sugar. We went with Gong Cha today. This is the QQ Passion Fruit Green Tea. QQ meaning you get coconut jelly and boba pearls. And then we also got the lychee oolong tea with boba pearls. They have other toppings like basil seeds, white boba, popping boba, pudding, and all kinds of milk teas and things like that. But we wanted to go classic fruit tea today with some boba. Uh, it's been a few weeks since we had some drinks of this caliber. This is the passion fruit. Mm. No passion fruit seeds, sadly, but it has a great passion fruit flavor. With the coconut jelly and the boba pearls, it makes for a nice chewy experience. This is the lychee oolong. Mm. I'm not really liking the lychee oolong that much. Yo, y'all brothers know I got a serious sweet tooth. So after eating all that food in the New World Mall underground food court, that sweet tooth was activated. We came over to another mall. This is the Tangra Mall. They have a food hall and all kinds of restaurants. We're at Cafe Maiko to get their famous matcha soft serve, but we swirled it with a little ube, had them throw some matcha powder on top. So before it melts, I say cheers to you. Mm. 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 That is a pretty intense matcha flavor, which I personally love. I get matcha teas a lot. Don't usually go for the lattes because it dulls the flavor a little bit. But in this case, I would say frozen. It's a solid 9.5 out of 10. Let's get some of the ube. I think there's two good flavors going well together. Not super sweet. We got a little waffle cone underneath for the extra bit of crunch when we get all the ice cream done with. That was a fun day of eating in Flushing Chinatown. Don't hate, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.